Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the bill. To the bill. Colleagues, I rise today before you in support of Senate Bill 1008. My husband Tony and I raised our boys in a home filled with love, security, a strong belief in our public education system, a roof over their head, and food on the table. The young men that are housed at McLaren Youth Facility, many of them, don't have that level of security in their life. One of, on one of my visits, I met Todd. Todd at the time of our first meeting was 19 years old and already had three kids of his own. Todd's dad was incarcerated for drugs. Growing up, Todd's mom continuously battled alcoholism. Todd's brother was incarcerated for drugs. To say that Todd's life was not easy would be an understatement. His level of trauma that he faced in his life growing up was staggering for a young teenager to deal with. Yet Todd stood in front of me on this night at McLaren with a tear rolling down his cheek because he just completed his GED and he never thought that was something that was attainable for him. Education was not a point of focus for him growing up and he sees that now as a game changer and a point of pride. I have no idea why and what Todd did to be at McLaren. And to be honest, it makes no difference in my interaction with him. And that has been on more than one occasion. He is serving his time and is using it to make himself a stronger citizen, a better neighbor, and focusing on his education to open doors of opportunity for his future. Since Measure 11 was enacted in Oregon, several Supreme Court decisions have ruled against juveniles being sentenced to death and that mandatory juvenile without parole is unconstitutional for all crimes, showing that our highest court believes that youth should be treated differently from adults when considering punishment for a crime. In recent years, guidance for psychologists have expanded to acknowledge that adolescence now effectively runs up to the age of 25 for the purposes of treating those, those young people. Also, neuroscience shows that a young person's cognitive development continues into their late adolescent age, which is 18 years and over, and that their emotional maturity and judgment will be affected by the prefrontal cor cortex of the brain as it has, as, has fully developed. The age at which, of which psychosocial maturity reaches adult levels is beyond the age of 18 and suggests that adolescents and young adults are still developing in ways that should and could influence their culpability in criminal proceedings. Knowing this, it is difficult to imagine that the mandatory sentences prescribed by Measure 11 must apply to each and every 15, 16, and 17-year-old the same exact way in sentencing. Science says brain development is still occurring, and those adolescent brains do have the capacity to change and be reformed, even though they potentially have experienced extreme levels of trauma in their lives. Every case is treated the same in Measure 11. This is not what we expect of our professional judges. This is not about rehabilitation. It's purely punitive. Think of going to the doctor and getting a serious diagnosis that will require a lengthy plan of treatment. Do you want your doctor to follow the same exact plan for each patient that has been given the same diagnosis for you? Or would you like them to review the past health, health history, take in effect your lifestyle, your current health situation? In other words, look at you as an individual patient with serious needs and a need for an individualized plan for rehabilitation and recovery. We expect that of our professional doctors and surgeons. We expect the same from our professional teachers, our professional mechanics, our professional firefighters, our professional lawyers, and we must expect it from our independent professional judges. Senate Bill 1008 will have a great positive impact for the state of Oregon more youth will have the true opportunity to do their time, be reformed, and not reoffend because education and their rehabilitated well-being 
will be the strong focused while incarcerated and will give them a stronger foundation before they are released. And it Excuse me, uh, Representative Peluso yields. Thank you, Representative Peluso. And it will offer a whole new generation of youth hope moving forward. As it was said in committee, the choices they make as teenagers does not need to reflect who they are today. These 15, 16, and 17-year-olds must answer to the crimes they have committed. They must face a judge. And after reviewing all the facts in front of them, the judge must independently determine if that youth offender will be tried in an adult court or in a juvenile court and what their sentence will be. We expect that of our judges. Colleagues, I urge a yes vote on Senate Bill 1008. Thank you.